we all go in search of happiness because this is how we want to feel. Instinctively, we want to feel positive and uplifted and that feel good feeling of elation and joy and happiness. So today we're diving into the five ways in which you can nurture and curate innate happiness. Welcome, my name is Dorothy and if you're here for the first time, thank you. And if you've returned for more videos, awesome to have you with me again. This channel is dedicated to help you live your best self and to give you the tools and the strategies and the means in which to do so. And of course, to live authentic to who you are and of your truth. <laughs> and of course, and to live inherently happy, which is your natural state. And we're going to dive into this a little bit more today because that's the focus of our conversation. Everything is more accomplishable when we approach it from a joyful mindset. But is the one feeling that we crave and strive to feel the most also the very same thing that's most elusive to us? Authentic and happiness is your natural inherent state of being and when I talk to clients about this notion it's often eye-opening and very awe-inspiring so the idea is to think about happiness as innately driven which means your natural state that is the state in which you might wish to live all of the time is one of happiness happiness being contentment comfort, safety, calm, and able to access those moments of joy and elation and bliss by choice. And the new thing perhaps to consider is if we are innately happy, then what happens is we move ourselves out of this state unknowingly by our thoughts, by thinking negative thoughts, by being self-critical or having doubts, by being critical or envious of others, by feeling fear and anxiety. All of that moves us out of our natural state of happiness. So in this video, we're going to talk about the natural ways to bring yourself back into this state, your inherent state, and for you to be able to live from this place far more of the time. Yes, things are going to move you out of feeling happy. The point is not to avoid the moments of life, but rather to recognize when you're not feeling the way you want to feel and then to be able to bring yourself back into this natural, God-given, inherent state that we all can live from. That's my wish and desire for you. Remember, you have the ability to curate this feeling by choice as often as you wish, as often as you need to feel, as often as you need to bring yourself back into happiness. So you can begin to curate happiness from within by not reacting to what others are doing and saying and by what's happening around you. I would encourage you in these moments to make it a practice of going inward, to connecting inward, to perhaps focusing on a part of your body, on your breathing or on your heart center, and just to be able to notice and evoke the presence of what you feel there. Most of the time, when we are reacting to others, we take on whatever feelings and mood state they are holding, and we also tend to adopt their thinking habits. So if people are commiserating and being negative, if you jump into that conversation, those thoughts and the energy behind them are going to have an effect and impact on you if you allow it. And so in those moments, you're best to move yourself out of the conversation, to surround yourself with different people, with different conversation, or to be alone with yourself, to regroup, to recalibrate, to recognize how you want to think and feel, and then to return to that. So you're not being impacted by others, by others who are not intending to move you out of your positive and happy place, but who are by simply their own negativity. We have to remember that feeling positive is a choice. And we know from the research of clinical depression that cognitive therapy can help people to challenge and change their thoughts. And when they do so, and they begin to foster new kinds of thinking, neutral, perhaps even positive thoughts, that changes, that helps to change their brain chemistry. So they are naturally inducing a different state of being by what they choose to think about. 
And we also know that if you're caught in this cycle of thinking negatively or thinking sad thoughts, it's going to perpetuate your feelings of being sad and depressed. So it's about recognizing when you're in those moments when you're thinking in ways that are not serving you, that are impeding you from being happy, and then to instill a thought that you choose that's going to help you begin to cycle in a direction of what you want to feel and think. So here are the five most helpful, the best ways in order to feel your innate happiness and to connect with that inherent state that you own, that you can live as. I also want to just mention that when you wake in the morning, even though you may not be aware of the dozens, maybe even hundreds of thoughts that are flooding your mind, those thoughts initially can move you out of your calm, quiet, content state. So practice when you first wake in the morning to just be, to just focus on your breathing for a time, to look outside, to just observe without judgment or critique what you notice. It's a little bit like my, it is mindfulness practice. It's also like what you would do in meditation where you're just observing without judgment and allow yourself just to revel in this initial feeling, this state of contentment, this state of calm before you get ramped up with the thoughts that you're thinking because those thoughts are going to send you on a different path unless of course those thoughts are ones that you are curating by choice. All right, so the first way in which to curate your inner happiness is to visualize happiness. And what I mean by that is to focus inward in your body on the place in which you would feel happiness originating. So think about that now. Where do you feel happiness and joy from within? And to go to that place even now as we're talking about it. And you can close your eyes and you can envision what that feels like, what happiness feels like in this place. Or perhaps you may feel happiness originate in your heart center or perhaps throughout your whole body. And notice what the sensations are. Do you feel lightness? Does it feel expansive? Does it feel warm? Just being attentive to what the sensations are. And that's a way, a very visceral way, to connect with the physical presence of happiness within you. And then to watch as it grows and expands as you're focusing on it and feeling it. The second way to curate happiness from within is to speak kind and loving words to yourself. We're often not as observant of what we say to ourselves, And of course, you are the only person that can hear the thoughts you think. So it's up to you to better manage and observe what you tell yourself because what you tell yourself, your body is listening and believing. And so practice first catching yourself in moments when you're not happy and notice what you're saying to yourself. What are the critical thoughts? What are the fear-based thoughts? What are the thoughts that have pulled you out of that state of happiness or contentment? And then choose what you will say with loving kindness. Choose what encouraging and nurturing thoughts you will say to yourself, even if it is at first a struggle to believe in everything that you say. Practice this new inner dialogue of kind and loving words, words similar to what you would say to your child. And then notice how that feels. Notice how that begins to feel as you make this a regular habit. The third and one of my favorite ways to induce the state of happiness from within naturally is exercise. Whether it's an all-in strenuous workout or a walk or gentle stretching or yoga, what matters is that you are present as you are doing the exercise. And because you are moving the body, <laughs> you're gonna feel the feel-good effects as the brain releases serotonin and dopamine and endorphins into the body. That alone is gonna give you a reciprocal effect of feeling upbeat and positive and alive and happy during and for several hours after your exercise. It's probably one of the most incredible ways to feel happy naturally. And a fourth way to curate this feeling of inner happiness 
is meditation. Yes, of course. <laughs> meditation causes an increase in alpha waves in the posterior part of the brain. So it's like a wakeful rest state. You are alert, but you are very calm. And that's a beautiful way to exist in your everyday life. And it's also a feeling that we feel when we are happy. So with meditation and mindfulness practice, you are helping the brain to achieve this perfect state of contentment and wakefulness that really allows you to feel at peace and calm and alert, similar to how we feel when we are happy. And with meditation, we also have a cumulative effect. That means the more you practice meditation, the more you experience meditation in your life, the more you're going to feel the effects of a different perspective, a calmer, open approach to living life and to being observant is exactly how we feel when we are happy and content. This ability to observe with curiosity in the present moment is the same formula for how we feel happiness innately. And finally, the fifth practice to help you curate happiness naturally from within, gratitude and lots of it. So I'm gonna leave you a link in the description for one specific meditation that's gonna help you to curate gratitude as a morning practice. But the idea here is so simple, it's about training yourself to think about what's good in your life, what's working well, what allows you to feel happiness naturally. And that of course just perpetuates the feelings that you want to feel. It's not difficult to feel happiness. We forget how simple it is to feel our innate happiness. So practicing gratitude, whether it's a gratitude journal or simply remembering to be thankful for more in your life will elicit the feeling of happiness easily, naturally for you. And I also want to leave you with a bonus practice for how to curate happiness from within. It is doing something every day that nurtures and honors your soul. It's making sure that you do things in your life that will allow you to feel happiness easily, readily, because you enjoy what it is you're doing. We forget that life is meant to be enjoyed. We forget that we're supposed to be happy because <laughs> that's our inherent state. That's what we can easily do. And if you think about a life in which you approach everything from being content and peaceful and calm and happy, it means your decision making will be much better. It means you are gonna be more likely to follow a path that is aligned with what's best and right for you. And it's gonna mean a far greater presence and ability to be in the world. So I hope that you'll take these five plus one strategies, practices to heart to live them each day. And I'm also gonna leave you in the description some links to other resources, blog posts, meditations, a couple of YouTube videos, and some episodes from my new wisdom podcast, which are specifically designed to help you access your inner state of happiness naturally. Here's the challenge for you. Using these five practices to curate your happiness. I'd love to hear from you. Which one do you find to be most helpful? Which one for you immediately brings you into this wonderful, beautiful state? I'd also love to hear if you have any of your own beautiful ideas for curating happiness naturally. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to this channel and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you'll be among the first to know when I've uploaded new videos. As always, sending you all of my love. This is Dorothy. Namaste.